Hi, I'm Heinbach, good to have you back. I've been playing a Eurek modular for close to eight years now. And last year, in the seventh year, we had our crises. Because I had gotten into all these other synthesizers, namely banana synthesizers such as the Seattle Lombard, and I found a lot of things that I really enjoyed, mainly that these were instruments, self-contained, I didn't even have to chase the newest module anymore. And then the test equipment came along and I started going on that journey. And when it was time for me to assemble a new system for me to take on the road when I do scoring work for theater, I built a system that I thought, this is very powerful and this is different to the test equipment, this is different to anything else. I basically built it around the form as wavetable navigator and the 512 ink sequencer, which is now up here. And theoretically, this system had all the possibilities to make yeah anything I wanted it to do. And when I sat down, it just turned into bleepity bloopity I don't know what kind of tracks <laughs> tracks that I could maybe use as a bed for a video, but nothing I connected emotionally with, which is completely different to every time I turned on the, the test equipment. The Surge synthesizers that I played, I thought, oh, this seems to be the way to go. I'm doing so much good stuff with that. It makes tons of fun. So now I need Surge, I need to sell all the Eurac. Then I realized it's modular. And if the modular is no fun, the problem is not with the modular, the problem is with you, in that case, me. So um, I thought about what modules I had put in there and what I really wanted to do and what interests me. And I decided to try to take everything that I'd learned from the test equipment and put it into a system that resembles the test equipment. And this is what I ended up with. Why did I do that? Well. Making music with test equipment is hard and it's challenging. It's nightmare difficulty if we were playing Doom. But there's something that I really enjoy about it, about the process, about the way that you end up with sounds that sound like pure electronic music. Focusing on the sound and trying to make tiny movements and adjustments, it created such music that I felt was richer than anything I had done in recent times on the modular. And so I kind of needed that hardcore difficulty in the modular. Before I show you some patch ideas, let's have a look at the modules and the test equipment counterparts. We start here with the Pittsburgh timetable, a beautiful divider that's probably one of my oldest and most reliable ways to get rhythms. The test equipment equivalent for this is the Genrad tone burst generator, which takes signals and you can divide them in all kinds of funky ways. The Dupfer A151 is the Brunecare multiplexer. I made a full video on that and I also mention the A151 there. The Schwemann RS4 is a set of bandpass filters that are tunable and that would be the four Brunecare filters that I've got here. The random source search resonant equalizer is basically like the spectrum shaper that I tried out in Dennis Studios and at Willem Twee, but sadly I don't have that here. A very beautiful box of musically set filters. So maybe in my setup right now this would approach the Vermona 2010 right here. Also a video is available. Then we've got the big one. <laughs> this is the Metasonics R54 and it's one of the reasons I got into modular. This is a vacuum tube oscillator slash bandpass filter again and the thing that it resembles in the test equipment is Stockhausen's mighty bass drum, the Rode and Schwarz UBM. Again, see the video for that. You gotta have ring modulation if you want to approach neue Musik. So here's the phonetronic MH31 voltage controlled modulator and I got this as a gift back in the day from Matthias of Phonetronic and I'm so happy that it's back in my rack because this is a very nice sounding ring modulator. In my test equipment rack this is the equivalent to the frequency analyzer by Electroharmonics which in modded form is also in use at Willem II. The Schwemann DMF2 is a multi-mode filter and what comes closest in my setup are the EG and G189 filters, which take the circuit from the original ARP2500 and put it in an amplifier test equipment piece, which was used for analog computing. And I have to do a video on that because they're 
gorgeous. Here's the humble dub for A199 Spring Reverb. I'm just using a bigger tank, but the spring tank that comes with it is also fine. Equivalent in the test equipment. Hmm. I don't really have an equivalent for it. Maybe some of the sounds from the AMA, like this has a sort of springish vibe to it, which I really enjoy. The Bustle Pro Pass is a simple passive filter that helps me clean up the mix. So it's probably related to the filters that I use here that are MS-20 based and are also amplifiers, which help me with mixing everything. Similarly, the Intelligent Unity Mixer here, which is just another mixer. The weird noise ring. This is a random source and noise source. In the test equipment, that would be this WaveTech unit, which does very much the same thing also beautifully. The weird oscillator is very similar in sound to this WaveTech oscillator and has a similar amount of outputs. They are on the back of the WaveTech. Mass. It's a function generator and it's probably the one thing you need in every modular and I use it in every patch. It's one of the best modules of all time. The function generators that are comparable to it are the WaveTech 185, which I also use in a similar fashion in every patch. It's it's the auxiliary, it's something that can be used for everything. Brains, pressure points and morphogen are basically my Tuscan 242, because this is something that I use for looping a lot. But how do I patch all this? Well, let's start with the resonant equalizer. First, let's ping it. I'm using the left side of maths. Another residue tuned to complementary frequencies, I think I could make whole tracks with just the resonant equalizer and a ping. Let's use the resonant equalizer on a saw wave from the weird oscillator. This sounds so good, I need to sample it in the morphogene. This way I can pitch it around and create harmonies, same as I would on a 4-track, only with a different granular texture. Now let's add some spring reverb. The resonant equalizer has two inputs and four outputs, so I'm gonna try to put it in the feedback path of the spring reverb. Now I'm putting that signal through the ring modulator and I'm using the weird oscillator as the carrier wave.
adding modulation to the ring modulator. I've never heard anything so rusty as the phonytronic. So it's time to bang some trash cans by changing the envelopes on maths. I'm missing a kick drum, so I'm pinging the Metasonic Super Module with maths. The trick to get a more potent kick is by sending the same envelope also to the pitch in of the Super Module, but attenuated. together now. That is a bit messy, so I'm employing the Pittsburgh timetable to sync the triggers and envelopes. Adding pitch modulation to the weird oscillator using pressure points adds some interesting slowing down and speeding up effects. Noise from Noise Ring to the Schremann Res 4 gives you access to four beautiful angels. Modulating the DMF2 with the same envelopes mixed with some interesting rhythmic effects. But enough of Bergheinbach. Let's see what the DMF2 can do else. Here both filters are self-resonating, and by patching them back into the control inputs you get beautiful timbres. This is like the micro version of the beautiful bank of sign generators you find at Willem Twe Studios. The Döpfer A151 is one of my absolute favorite modules. It's cheap, it's simple and you can do so many things, it enhances every patch. Here I'm using it to sequence waves from the oscillator. It gets even more interesting if you clock it from the same oscillator. By modulating the face of the weird oscillator you can get all kinds of interesting rhythms. These can then be used to ping stuff. Let's bring in some quantized chaotic modulation from the noise ring. I 
patching some demo sounds is nice, did I actually fulfill my goal of creating an instrument that inspires me? I feel I did. I've already recorded three tracks with the setup, one that I really like. is not a bad ratio, especially since I made all these in one day. So I'm very happy. It brought me back to the pure sound of electronic music, the pure sound of modular, and it made me think about sound and patching more before I had the feeling there was too much being done for me already. And apparently I kind of crave hard mode when I want to compose music. The vector sequencer is now with the test equipment because I can control now all my other synths from the station and that is something I'm looking so forward to exploring too. So that is my new yet rather old school approach to the Uvorec modular. And I'm looking forward to taking this setup with me on the road and composing in hotel rooms and yeah, I think we're gonna be good friends. So that's it for this video. I'll put a sound pack of the modular up on my Patreon and the music too. Thank you all who supports me there. You are the reason I can make these videos. Thank you all for watching. If you have any questions, do leave in the comments below or visit the subreddit. See you in the next one. Bye.